Hello, I'm Nova Minakawa, and today I have Morty Crow with me, and we're going to be talking about Vampire Therapist. We just finished this game last week, and I was just walking with Morty one morning, and I was thinking, hey, we're already talking about how we felt about this game. Why don't we record it and share our thoughts with everybody? Yeah, yeah. It seems like a... You know, if we're going to have the conversation anyway, right? Yeah, might as well make content <laughs> out of that, right? <laughs> right? And we had a good bit of thoughts, I think. Yeah, I think so too. So uh, we're just going to do a short talk right here, have our final thoughts about it, the game, the characters, anything mm -hmm, we've mm -hmm. learned, the gameplay, stuff like that. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I played this game solo, right. but you were in the chat all the time, um, so yes. you know as much of it as I do, but from just a viewer perspective, what are, what are your overall thoughts? My overall thoughts was that it was a lot of fun. Um, like it has, it's a game that has a lot of heart to it. Um, there's a lot of each character is very, you know, has their depth to them, which is something I always appreciate. And by nature of it being a therapy game, uh, every character also has their flaws or their hangups. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, I love me some, uh, characters with issues to work through so <laughs> i do yes um yeah i had a lot of fun playing with it and i mean it's funny too i love things that are funny i i like the comedic element to it of course there's some very serious topics and mm -hmm. the um characters the clients that we have have uh, things to work out for for sure none of them are necessarily good people but they are people and I think um, just all those elements combined made it a very enjoyable game yes that's true I think the the comedy aspect should not be understated that certainly takes a a serious game and yeah, what could be a know, serious have, game if, well yes what could be a serious game it makes it something that feels I don't know in a way more grounded i don't know or maybe not grounded i think right it's word, approachable like, you know yes yeah, more approachable it's like you know usually there's good with the bad and that comes with comedy and seriousness right you get you get, you get the light spots to contrast with the dark spots but hopefully so. too much light because again these are vampires all of them are vampires light would not be good for them i mean a certain one of them was causing all the flames to flare up in our office oh that's or... different that's fire that's only what frankenstein's right bad with fire vampires eh, whatever yeah anyway <laughs> it was just vampires it's just vampires in this right. game uh why don't we mm -hmm. start with uh the characters not the clients yet but just the characters that we can uh I don't know, just basically the characters that we've controlled, that we talk to, that are not clients. So Sam, um, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. about Sam, our main protagonist, I suppose? I hesitate yeah, to call yeah. him a protagonist, but he is. But it's just, it's a little mm -hmm. funny to call, <laughs> um, you know, the, the yeah, therapist. I mean, the, yeah. He's not your therapist. He's you. You he's, are the therapist. He's me, but he's also his own character, you know? Right. That's true. That's true. It's not like a make your own character or role playing game, but I think he's a pretty good protagonist, right? He has, he has his own issues to be working through, which is why we get sessions where we as Sam, or I should say we, you and he, um, we. uh, yeah, you two had sessions where you were the ones being examined or like, you know, discuss being the, the, the client in the therapy relationship, right? Right, yeah, I did um, I did appreciate that, that we were not just uh, a therapist. We also got therapy, which, you know, everybody should probably get, right? Mm-hmm. Looks mm -hmm. eyes shiftily. <laughs> <laughs> there were many times in game, and you brought this up, too, where I was, I was like, hmm, maybe I should look into that. Yeah, you, you said that more than once. I want to say... More than three times. All right. But anyway, back to Vampire yeah. Therapist, which is what we're really talking about here. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I, I think Sam is a great uh, 
protagonist to be in this kind of situation there were so many times where i would say a thought and then sam would immediately say this the same thought Mm -hmm. i feel Mm -hmm. like that lends itself uh just like you know a lot of props to the writing team for like Okay, mm. what is what is the player going to be thinking? And like, boom, lo and behold, Sam says it for me in his own um, American way. Right. I think uh, it shows that they were very conscious of. It wasn't. It was not all of these instances were world building, but some of them were. Right. Like when someone would talk about a power, and then we have to think about: wait, do vampires in this setting really have this power? And then <laughs> Sam could be like. You can't actually do that. Or maybe he'd be like, can you actually do that? You know, like that kind of, right? And it wasn't just that, though, but that was just, you know, one example of things that I'm pretty sure you had that exact moment. Like, I feel like with at least one character in mind reading, for example, it's like, you know, it's just like, oh, can they actually do that? I don't, I don't know. And then Sam yeah, it, it's you know, all vampires are different, right? Some, some can do that. Some, mm-hmm. I don't know. The rules. You can be anything. You can be sparkly, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, this just had me really wanting to know what the bigger world was in, in Vampire Therapist. Like how, I mean, clear. There's a club here that just straight up tells people that they're vampires, right? You know, like, mm-hmm. what are the implications of that? Right. <clears throat> yeah, that's, it's a, it's an interesting setting, though the setting itself isn't particularly uh, the focus of the game. Right, right. right. But I kind of like that about games, where you get a sort of taste of what the world is like, but, um, you know, it's not all spelled out for you, per se, you know, and you, you just kind of get to think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought Sam was just like a real sweetheart and I was really interested to learn about his backstory and, um, hopefully you're watching or listening to this after watching me play through Vampire Therapist or playing it yourself, but wow, his backstory, I was really, I'm glad there was some hooks going back to America confront his, uh, vampire Therapist 2, Vampire Lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, how about, how about Andy? How about Andy? I thought Andy was... all Honestly, you're, if you go down each of these characters, I'm going to say for pretty much all of them, I thought they were great characters, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Andy was a really solid mentor character, I think. Um does a good job of introducing you to all the new concepts, having that sense of humor. Like, I feel like he's, you know, often making little jokes now and again, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So keeping things from getting too heavy um, at any given time. Except the end, am I right? Except for at the end, that's true. Um, But I think that's perhaps part of why the end hits as hard as it does, right? Because throughout the game, he's the the rock. He's the support. He's the one who introduces you to all the concepts and then also keeps things lighthearted when you're not working and is encouraging you to take care of yourself. Yeah, so it really does seem the... like he has it kind of all figured out. So I think when the ending happen- yeah, happened, I was, I, I don't know, I just like that kind of different look at him. It feels like he has everything figured out and also... He also feels like he has everything figured out, but mm-hmm. um, that leads him to some some pretty dangerous thinking. And I, ugh, man, I really just loved after going through all what you've learned, all the cognitive distortions, which he easily brushes aside because he taught them to you, right? You know, yeah. Um, and then and then you lead you you end it you save him through compassion. And I talked about it during my playthrough, but just, ugh, I really love that. I really love mm-hmm. that when <laughs> when stories take that kind of approach because it's it's so needed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Like you were just saying, right? He teaches you all of these distortions. So of course, if he's gotten to that point where he is at the end of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Where he's sitting out there waiting for the sun to rise, he knows all of the things he said to you. He's 
probably been thinking about them, you know, this, the whole time he was sitting out there, if not for days or weeks leading up to it. So, of course, he already has his deflections prepared. Yeah. But like you said, ultimately, it's that compassion, that, that dare I say, human connection <laughs> between people, which is what helps him step down from that and get back inside, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, great. Also, great mentor character and everything like that. Let's move on to Crimson here. Oh, yeah, Crimson... Very fun, um, very fun character. I really liked the dilemma that she was presenting herself with throughout. Right? Yeah, I thought the concept uh, if of her just like kind of not aging through vampire blood. Like she, ha yeah, she has a very interesting dilemma. Like she'll die without it, but also she's kind of like putting off a decision. And does she? She knows all about this vampire world but is she a part of it does she want to be a part of it uh, i mean mm -hmm. it's not a decision to be t to be taken lightly and considering all the other vampires we met they didn't really have a choice right but um she she is she has it she has it and she has right. to seriously consider what she's doing right yeah the the fact that like you said, it's not an easy decision to decide that you want to be an undead who now needs human blood. And sure, like right now, the club's got a good thing going for yeah. consensually getting human blood. But being immortal forever is a long time, right? Sure you is. can't You can't know how long that club will last or if things will get better or worse or whatever, you know? So it's like, oh, taking that decision to extend... To extend your life, I don't want to say indefinitely because vampires can still be killed, uh, but to extend it for quite a long time. But knowing that if you stop your current vampire blood diet, <laughs> you're going to die in short order. Yeah. Right. That also makes that unte not tenuous, right? Because if something did ever happen to Andy for whatever reason, right? Like, mm -hmm. then Crimson would also be in trouble. So it's like, it's an unstable situation. She has to pick something. Yeah. Right. I know if it was me making the decision, the one thing I would regret if I chose to be a vampire would be all the nice human food. Mm, That's tacos, true. Burgers. That, I, I also agree with that. I feel like that would be a huge loss. <laughs> like, Ugh, French fry. Like I know, I know, I know what some of the cocktails they have. Oh, those looked great. Uh, yeah, and Crimson like mixes in some human blood to make it palatable to the vampires. But like, all right, this is a tangent here. This isn't really the game yeah, at this, this point. Yeah, this is like, but it's like, go on. If you just mix in a little bit of blood with some ketchup, could you still have French fries? This is a very important question for me. If I was considering, <laughs> if I want to be a vampire. Yeah, yeah, I'd have I'd have them test it for me. Like how what's the blood to food ratio that we need to take? Right. But like would it even taste good, I wonder. You know. That's also like... true. It'd be a, a little a little irony probably. <laughs> anyway, um Yeah, back yeah. to the back to the game and the character, Crimson. Yeah, Crimson. I liked um the food or you know, the drinks that we got to see. I liked the banter. Um, I think her backstory is also very interesting. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, great, great set of characters. Yeah. I also like how, like the relationship development between her and Sam, especially like she helps Sam learn when it's appropriate for him to do or not to do things, mm -hmm. you know, both with early on when he starts non-consensually therapy uh giving her therapy right yeah like there's that but then also with helping sam find human partners to get blood from and all that but if he's not feeling it then giving him the drink i don't know i think there's a there's good it's what you want out good of bartender, character right? development. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that menti sort of bar bartender mm -hmm. anyway let's move on to the meat of the game which is the clients right we, okay what 
a great variety of clients that Sam interacts with, right? Mm -hmm. They were endlessly entertaining. And um, I just found myself really feeling for them as time went on. Some more than others, you know? It's true. But um, Mm -hmm. all of them, I think by the end, nonetheless. Um, Let's start with Dr. Drain. Ah, yes, yes, the good doctor. And Luridus. We don't find Mm -hmm. that out until until later. Yeah. (laughs) Well, really just the second session, right? I believe. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just the second one. Yeah. But yeah. I think and actually as a little preface before we get into Drain himself, I think all of the characters do a great job of taking the kind of problems that, you know, humans have, but then blowing them up to supernatural proportions in a way that makes makes them examinable at a like a different level, but you can still very clearly feel the allegories, right? Sure, yeah. Like like but they but consistently throughout the way that they're portrayed makes it so it's like oh this is this is definitely the vampire version of something i can easily imagine happening with <laughs> yeah. a, a, a person sure right? yeah and i think i think that's all really that's all really well done for all of them and with drain specifically right he puts actually a, a lot of pretty I want to say pretty much all of them put a lot of pressure on themselves, right? Yes. As, so all the yeah. characters put a lot of pressures on themselves for different reasons and different, and it manifests in different ways, like what that has on them. But Drain putting a lot of pressure on himself to do work that he thinks would improve, uh, improve the world. Um, yeah, and... he has a very noble goal, but um, mm-hmm. I think. I, maybe maybe it's a bit a little bit of a tangent, but when you think about the kind of work he's doing, he's doing for for good of humanity, basically. Yet he's like sort of this unapproachable, stuffy, mm-hmm. logistics sort of person, right? His goal right. is noble, yet he doesn't. It almost feels like the goodness out of his altruistic sort of way. Uh, just just gets it gets in his way you know mm-hmm. I uh, think... and i wonder sorry sorry to cut you off uh just mm-hmm. thinking about it like hmm was his original goal to do something good or was it because he hated so much about what he was that he's creating this out for himself you know and that causes mm-hmm. his problems right I think I think we've had this talk with other characters who I won't bring up because that's not what this is about. But like there are sometimes characters, especially like Dr. Drain, right, where they're trying to do something big for the world, but they're often unapproachable or really critical of other people. Like it sounded like he didn't even let a lot of his team do much work, right, right. because he was so perfectionist, where they're doing this stuff for humanity, but often they seem to treat humans pretty poorly where they seem to care more about humanity as an as a concept yes and they concept. do about actual people uh, right? which, which like, is also like relatable to some some of the other clients right yes you know, the concept true. here is they treat it as better than what is reality you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and so with drain and he's he's making artificial Blood. blood for vampires to take right right which also could just which, I be guess, used for endless other things if it if it went well you know right and so i guess going back like i was saying like oh he cares about humanity i guess he's technically caring a little bit more about vampire manity vampires i don't know well um, maybe than... like he, he i feel like he's treating vampires more as an affliction rather than their own right Species, so I wouldn't say he's like doing it for van- vampire humanity, but to for just because I don't for know. It, it's, it's like this conflicting yeah. thing, right? Is it for human humanity? Is it for vampire humanity? Who is it really for when he's, you know, right. hating himself for what he is, and um, but also looking down on on the people he's trying to help? You know, 
Right. Yeah, and I think that puts a lot of pressure. He puts a lot of pressure on himself and denies himself many things all across the the spectrum of things that he might need from like just relaxing basic and taking needs. a vacation. <laughs> yeah, like base, right. Base needs like, you know, sleeping. sleeping, right. Like base needs like that. Um, you get more advanced needs across the, uh, across the whole hierarchy, but like he's denying himself a lot, all in pursuit of this goal. And then of course, when pursuing that goal, he stumbles on something that gives him a hit of yeah. all the stuff he's keeping himself away from. It's little wonder that he immediately, I don't want to say he immediately gets addicted, but he struggles with addiction to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he spent so long denying it to himself. And now the thing that he's making is giving him what he wants, but are giving him what he needs, but not in the way he wants it. Right. And that's, um, it's, it's interesting. It's, you can see where his problems come from. I right? actually kind of wonder about the synthetic blood because, like, that's what's getting him addicted. Right, he's addicted to that, right? Um, but it turns him into Lord Luridus where he gets real blood. So I just kind of wonder, like, I'm so curious about the makeup of this of this blood, right? Because I can right. almost see it as, like, this, this stuff just doesn't give me what I want. And so it enacts this desire to get the real stuff. Like, is it so bad that it actually makes him go get the real stuff? I don't know. I mean, from his descriptions, I wouldn't think that was the case. But what do you what do I know? Right. Maybe, well, I don't know. It's just because he didn't he describe it. And I could be wrong. I, you know, I've played this over a couple of months at this point. Uh, yeah, that is true. Quick disclaimer, this was over a couple of months of gameplay, so we might misremember some details from earlier on, for sure. Right, but, but isn't it sort of like he takes it, and then he kind of just knocks out, turns completely into into Luridus, and he wakes up, and he's feeling good, right? So I don't know right. if it's actually the drug that's making him feel good. It's being Luridus, and everything hmm. that Luridus is doing that makes him feel good. Right. Well, that's yeah, that's certainly possible, too. Well, yeah. let, let's let's turn over to his alter ego, Luridus. Um, uh, yes. Wow, what a lot, what a lot, right? <laughs> that guy, that if I'm not mistaken, that's the only person that Sam pulled his gun on, right? Uh, yes, it is. He, I didn't even know he had that. That's the only time he he pulls it out. You're right. Yeah, I don't know how he. Well, I was gonna say I don't know how he got it overseas. I'm sure traveling with that, it wasn't easy, but. I don't know. Maybe it's you, easier you than can, I imagine. Like apply to bring weapons. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, it's complicated. I'm sure, but probably anyway. it's less complicated if you're a vampire. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, Luridus was a lot. He's so Just much. I <laughs> we're um, pretty chaste people in general. I would say. I mean, I certainly uh do do more talk than you in terms of like making jokes and stuff but the truth is i get embarrassed really easily <laughs> i wouldn't have guessed from your covering up some of the text bit that went well that was different times. i'm not okay th that was different i i did that because who knows if twitch would strike me down from, from <laughs> that it, like i don't know mm -hmm. Breasts and vulva were so like medically said it wasn't really in. I mean, uh, she okay. she said she used it, it. You know, she's talking about a sexual um, sort of context, but she said it so matter of factly it felt medical. <laughs> right. Um, no, really. But when it was the stuff when drain or not drain. Um, well, yes, drain. Luridus was saying like. I'm going to fuck a guy from the dumpster. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Turn around, <laughs> drop your clothes. Ah! Then that's the stuff that makes me go, oh, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I get I get you. I get you. <laughs> uh, but I but. thought it was it was still very funny. And yeah, um, I, I thought it was really interesting when he was switching so seamlessly back and forth between him and like 
the conversations he was having for himself. Um, I really liked that. I that was. I mean, he's like what, your first client, right? So mm -hmm. um, when I saw him having that breakthrough, I was like, yes, yes, let's go. Right. <laughs> um, so I was really rooting for him. Yeah, yeah, I agree. He feels, in a way, like, you know, all of the characters are, of course, vampire larger than life characters, especially once, especially with Drain, you know, once Luridus gets involved. But I think because of, like, having just that first session with only Drain, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, and then sort of viewing Luridus as the lens of what he's re suppressing about himself. Um, it's like, oh, it's, it's, he feels he feels very grounded in a way that I think some of the other characters feel a little bit more larger than life, at least to me, you know, listening in. But it could just be that he's the first client bias there, you know? Yeah, that's possible. Um, let's move on to Senor Este. De Este? De, de Este. I've, I don't, I can't remember, but I think at some point... Um, like Sam or other people would would just say Este, but oh, mm -hmm. but you're right. Although I don't know if we can ever trust Sam on what he say. <laughs> you're right, but I am Sam. He is me, so I'm yes, gonna give myself this... a pass on that one. Yeah, sounds good. We'll but... just call her Senora. I what a look! I love her design. Just first off, yes, it's true. Her outfit is fantastic she has some wonderful expressions yes. that she gets throughout mm -hmm. i know you appreciate a good hat oh i always appreciate a good hat that is very true <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um oh man there's a lot to talk about with her i just i don't even really know where to start honestly it i mean she might be my favorite client oh yeah yeah i think so just like she is someone who wants the world to be a better place. Like, uh, in terms of like, you know, she has very high standards, very aesthetics, very classic Renaissance, uh, woman, right? Like has all these different knowledges and skills, uh, was born in a time when women did not have much in the way of rights. Right. But still did a lot with what she had available to her. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, she wants things to be better, right? Like, yeah. she wants the arts to... Like, she wants things to improve, and she's frustrated at herself for not getting it there, right? And I think yeah. that's part of why I like her a lot. Like, yes, don't get me wrong, she lashes out at different people or, like, ideas of people throughout, right? Mm -hmm. Like, she puts down... Uh, I forget if it was a movie she saw, right, like, yeah, early on. Yes, it like was... She puts down the movie, she insults Sam... Um, a couple of times. Sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say it was sp not Space Wars. It was something like that, but you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not the Legal East is distinct Star Wars. <laughs> right, right. Um, and so like she, she's no stranger to putting down others, but ultimately it feels like she puts the blame for things not being better on herself. Not mm. on the others that she's talking about. And that, to me, makes her a very interesting and... I don't know if endearing is the right word, right? But she's a character that I like because of that, right? Like, that's that's the kind of uh, issue right, right. that makes a character very fascinating to me. She's um, very she's very motivated. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like you said, perfectionist. And also kind of a narrow view of what is good and what's not right um but i really I, I think she's out there to do good though ultimately right um mm -hmm. but a lot of the failings quote-unquote failings that she sees in in art the world etc she, she sees that on herself as well and mm -hmm. um you know and the more she done. sees that i'm oh, sorry continue no 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 go on to say, and the more she sees those failings, the more angry and frustrated she gets at herself, and the more angry and frustrated she is with herself, the worse she treats her proteges and you know people she sponsors, and the 
you know, it becomes a spiral, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely a spiral. Um, people who do badly reflect on herself badly. And, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad that she, I was really excited actually to see her partake in a, a hobby, her herself doing art, even if it wasn't art that I'm particularly fond of. I'm glad she did. Uh, yeah, how much? How much did the centaur uh, knock her down in your rankings? No, it didn't knock her down in the <laughs> rankings. Nova famously does not like centaurs. For anyone listening to this, I and don't like having not picked up that. I don't like also. certain centaurs, but this isn't about me. This is you're about, right. You're right. This is about her. Um, yeah. She, oh, she just sounded so powerful in her in her history. Right? She was kind of mm-hmm. like. Um, making moves everywhere and influence the original influencer, perhaps. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, um, I'll just end with like where she sort of ends up wanting to sponsor young women in, you know, her her particular favor uh, brand of art, but sponsoring nonetheless. It's like I'm gonna spend one million dollars or euros or whatever shit <laughs> yeah i think it was even more than that but yeah what was it a billion no i might my, my, well i don't know maybe it was a hundred million it, was, it felt like it was a lot but okay i don't remember the number but anyway it was a lot and it's just like hell yeah sponsor the yeah. arts yeah and she mentioned being i'm um, trying to be a mentor still but also letting them do you know, letting them put their own spins on it, but still trying to be a mentor, but trying to be a kinder one. Yes. Than she has been in the past. Yeah, you hopefully, know. you know, it's probably going to be baby steps. So I do fear a little for her. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> her true. Her students or whatever, but her the people she sponsors. But, you know, with continued therapy, I'm glad, you know, she was really like, I still want to do therapy with you. Please teach me how to use the internet. <laughs> I love that. Yep. Yes, it was very good. And honest, and actually that reminds me of something else that also applies to all of the clients, right? Mm-hmm. Is that all of the clients have taken the first step to actually come here, right? Yeah. On their own, which is, which huge. shows for each of them. Yeah, which, which for each of them, yeah, it's huge. It just shows a level of self-awareness that they need to do, like something is wrong and needs to be addressed, right yeah and granted some of them might have ideas of what it that should have been um that don't end up being true but like ultimately all of them came here because they were dissatisfied with the weight of the world against their minds and were committed to doing something about it Mm -hmm. and i think it makes sense to me that senora who's very uh actually i think even sam might have said something similar who's very perfectionist would take the therapy very seriously. Right. Yeah. You know, well, let's move on to Edmund Keen. Ah, uh, yes. We got his autograph. We kept it. The actor. The actor. The sad clown man. The sad clown man. Yeah. I, well, my first impressions I just can't believe he gaslit us for reals, for real. That was really funny. That's just Andrew Makos being like, Sam, he's gaslighting. <laughs> That's why the fires are going wild. <laughs> Don't you see? Yeah, I, I kind of missed when they got brighter, but I did I did notice the, the changes, yeah. Yeah, I, that was really f- funny. Just like, I don't know, a re- really good bit i don't know if a bit is quite the right word but it's a it's a bit of a joke yeah for sure um, yeah i know uh i think edmund keen is one that grew on me that i wasn't as fond of at first perhaps because of how many people he was killing for such superfluous yeah. reasons <laughs> he let's be clear he's killed a lot of people yeah you know that put a pretty that's that's a pretty rough taste well maybe not Maybe vampires are used to it, but I was going to say, it's a bad taste in my mouth to start off with just killing all of the critics or people who don't cast him. Yeah, it's and like, it's kind of well, like, well, and we'll get to her later, but Medi, like, yeah, obviously, she talks about killing people all the time, but she does it in a much more 
it's like food way, you know? It's food for her. Right. He's just, you know, slighted. Right. Right, which makes it feel worse for some reason, right? <laughs> but, it makes sense. It, it's worse yeah. for her reason. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Edmund definitely grew on me over the course of his sessions, especially with sad clown Edmund. Yeah, I mean, how can you not feel for him when he's in that outfit? Uh, yeah, I went I feel to like therapy the tr- and they told me, oh, I know it'll make you feel better. Go to see famous actor Edmund Keene. Mm-hmm. He's hilarious. And I said... But cowboy, I am Edmund. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, I think his my like for him sort of has this very ease in. Am I using that right? It's just like the graph is low, 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 then a little bit up, and then oh, up. You know what I mean? Oh, like exponential. Exponential, right? Um, but a slow crawl for, at first for for sure right 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 it started started low but then by the end it was really up there yeah yeah i mean still i wouldn't call him my favorite by any means but he's so funny he is funny yeah he, <laughs> he's really funny and something i like about him is even when the two of you are at odds in some of the earlier sessions i don't remember if he says it in an earlier one or a later one but he often like will back off in a way it's like Ah, but I understand you're playing the role of therapist, so you must say this, right? right? And and therefore, I must continue and not take too much offense at it, right? Like, Thank there, goodness. Yeah, even though it's not, I wouldn't quite call it self-awareness because that's not what's happening there. <laughs> yeah. Um, he manages to rationalize continuing participation even when it's difficult for him, which perhaps that's, you know, as he gets into in some of the later sessions, right? Like, who is Edmund Keen actually? A character that he's been acting as mm-hmm. basically his entire life. But perhaps that's the part of him underneath acknowledging that he really needs this. Yeah. And so he makes the character, you know, like if you're in a role playing game, you can make your character do different things. You can rationalize it in different ways. Like, you can try to, like, get in their head and be like, well, maybe they'd do this if A or if B. Right. In the same way, Edmund Keen underneath might realize he really was benefiting or needed these conversations and even though the character Edmund Keen would very much want to get out of there due to this insult well you know what he can rationalize staying because of this right yeah yeah I think it's very very interesting um yeah you know I was thinking about his backstory just now and I'm like oh that that does really suck you know he he was in poverty and then he's like taken by this old guy that dresses him up as a cupid way past when <laughs> that was probably appropriate right. but then at the same time he he's like and i got a real job and it was grueling i was on the sea for a week or whatever right. small amount of time <laughs> that was right. um mm-hmm. and then i i feel like he really comes into his own at the last session or well, well, the one before we say, "Hey, we got to go back to America," but you know, his his breakthrough, right? That really, I, when I talk about exponentially, like that session in particular, mm-hmm. reveals a lot about him. He he sees himself as a character. You learn about his backstory even further. Like he had a son. He was happy right. that he died. Like, damn, there's a lot of things to unpack there. Yeah, and like honestly. I don't even think these sessions really even started unpacking that one. Oh, too definitely much. not. They were I too th- busy with unpacking his present to worry about unpacking his past. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, yeah, that's, that was real. That's really heavy right there. So afraid for his own legacy that he was relieved when his child died. <laughs> yeah. Oof. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I, he definitely needs probably the, the most work out of everybody. Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and probably the, maybe not the least, but if I had to pick the least, Mehdi, if we want to move on to Mehdi, um, mm -hmm. starting from the end here, but I, I just like so happy where she ended up. Yeah. Yeah. She, I think, oh, what was the name? Bolgo? Yeah. Berg. 
Volgo? Something Ur- like that. Yeah. Or her druid character for LARPing. That's, yes. It was That was so funny. I like that. Well, like you said, starting at the end, I like that she was eventually able to reconnect with some actual, again, forgive the phrasing, human relationships, right? And not parasocial viewer to streamer relationships, yeah. right? Like actual, you know, relationships with friends. And the fact that it took the form of LARPing, I think is just really funny. <laughs> and also really funny is just how Sam and Andy completely roll with it as if this is just her new identity. Like, yeah, yes, yeah. Because they know it's healthy for her. Right, yeah. I mean, technically, Medi isn't really how you say her name anyway. It's like, I, I won't even try to pronounce it, but mm-hmm. anyway, yeah. Whew, excuse me. Um she just seems so happy and that's why i think it really made me happy yeah yeah as um i would i don't want to say a good one to end on because we obviously had all the andy stuff um as well Mm -hmm. but you know as far as like the recurring clients just puts you in a really good mood with that one which i think makes the andy stuff hit a little harder right yeah, uh, oh, I mean, so glad we didn't end with Edmund, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Medi, I thought, was a very interesting... Um, like, if we go back to what her actual issues were, right? Yes, and not just yes. Skip, not just skip those. It's really interesting to me that she's the oldest one, and yet she's the one who has adapted the best yeah. to the world, right? She's adapted best. She... I, well, she in the end she decides not to really do much with the computers, but she does find her her niche, right? And yeah, I'm, you, she she probably likes some things about it, but not enough t- to outweigh the terrible parasocial relationship she had with her her viewers. Right. And actually, you know what? Yeah, perhaps adapted the best isn't the word to look use, but um, like she's the one who is most up to date on the modern world, despite being the oldest yes. of them all. And that, I think, is really wild and interesting um, yeah. to think about. Like, so I, many of the mm-hmm. clients are stuck in their era. Yes, but not yeah. Her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I also kind of like the hints, I'll, I'll call them, along her her backstory, where it's just like, she doesn't, she mostly wants to be left alone, um, but she, she can't deny the use of her of her viewership but mm-hmm. she also has like this affinity for the woods um being um one at a piece and then she ends up with this druid character where she can still imagine the wilds even if she's not in them and with people that she cares about and people who, who, mm-hmm. who like her for more than just her body right yeah yeah, it's a good it's a really good spot um for her to be in i think cuz really she was a hermit for a lot of her time yeah even a hermit who maintained superficial relations with the world for like we were saying before for practical needs she needs food yeah the safest way to get it to get people to willingly uh serve her right mm-hmm. And so adapts to being, at least in the modern day, a, a streamer to get those, that following. Um, so, yeah, seeing seeing the way that ended up for her moving into those more genuine relationships, it's really good. And can we just tangent to the algorithm again? I know we talked about it a lot yeah. on stream. <laughs> we talked about it a lot on stream. But, like, Wild. I love the way they treat the algorithm in this game. I do too. And uh, I said it on stream too, but like, yeah, I'll c- incorporate that to my belief system. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, yeah. I didn't I know like about the- this, um, this angel, um, previously. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't either. Now, you know, I mentioned it in the stream too. It's like, I, I, my first vibes I got when she was talking about it, that, Oh, the algorithm is a, is is an accidentally created Lovecraftian deity 
you know, made by humanity that they've lost control of and may not even realize they made. But it makes more sense given the setting that it's an angel, right? Right. Um, or, well, you know, theoretically an angel. Um, but Andy seems convinced and he knows a lot, so probably is. Um, I just think that's really fun. And yeah, I like to treat it as a serious thought more than a joke because I think the characters yeah. do treat it very seriously. Yeah, and like, I don't know, the algorithm is something that probably people could afford to treat more seriously in reality, too, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know, just especially with right now, AI is very topical. Um, but like, AI, the algorithm, they're not. They're, they're they're just echoes in a way right of what humanity or like you know whatever it studied was you could say echo Never. chamber mm-hmm, mm -hmm, right like there's a lot of self-fulfilling prophecy i think we use that exact term while discussing it um in the stream involved with the algorithm um you know it's like oh youtube decides that it wants shorts to be big so it makes the algorithm um surface shorts more so if you do shorts you get big which makes shorts more popular right like yeah exactly you know it's like, it's like when i don't know it's just like oh they, they did it was a i don't want to say it was a relatively small part well i guess it was a relatively small part of medi's overall journey but it was a big part of what was fueling her issues right the need to do stuff that she didn't want to do for fear of losing relevance yes mm -hmm. and by losing relevance she would lose her followers which would mean she lose her power which means she loses safe which, catastrophizing but yeah you know in a real sense I, right no yeah I, I mean like this is the way she was thinking about it but also like as a metaphor right like if you're a content creator you especially if you're not like one of the huge ones who makes hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars a year, right? Like if you're, if you're like a small to mid-sized content creator, barely scraping by a change to the algorithm yes. can doom Killer. you, right? Like yeah. it can actually doom your channel or whatever. And that's, you know, that, that's a reasonable thing to be worried about. But, you know, like we were saying earlier, these take those human problems and spin them up to supernatural. Right. And so, Medi Medi's was a lot of fun for that. And I just love her attitude throughout. Yeah. Um, you know, like she definitely has her moments of seriousness and anger, but for a lot of it, she's very cheery and almost treats it more like she's educating Sam on the world rather than coming here yes. for help from mm -hmm. him. You know, it's just, it's a fun personality. Yeah. She's, she's very cute, very charming. Um, yeah, it's no wonder I'm she's a popular streamer. Happiness. Yes. I mean, like, yeah. how can we not talk at length about Medi being streamers, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. So that was all the clients. Let's talk about the gameplay itself. Now, mm -hmm. um, I've talked a little bit about it, but what did you... Any, any comments about it as a viewer? So... I mean, so it is mostly visual novel, right? Like there's, and there's, it's not really branching. Um, like you were given some times where you could pick different questions, but are different things to say. But for the most part, you know, it was, it's a very linear experience. And I think given that framework, the way the distortions were used is very good. I think it's a really neat way of being like, here's all these different concepts and we want you to think about them, but we don't want to give you an MMO hot bar full of cognitive distortions. <laughs> uh, could you imagine? Right? Yeah. I mean, I, so while we're talking, right, like we're, we're just, um, you know, we're just uh, are in, in this room, right? But I'm also looking at screenshots of the game. And like, I saw the list of all of them, like when you're picking, I'm like I can't imagine them all on a bunch of different buttons. And that just seems difficult. Um, I think to, the point like, is mentally like process with this, as a player. Yes, right? with with this, it's a visual novel, but the main part of the gameplay that has its appeal is that you are being tested. You are learning how mm -hmm. to recognize patterns. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't very good at it, but you know, <laughs> I think 
<laughs> you know, I had some moments where I'm like, oh, this yeah. is that. This is this. I can see what they're saying. Um, and and you even did hit a pretty stuff, good streak at the end because you got that, like, I got what that was it, 20 in a row achievement. Yeah. So you did hit your stride eventually. Uh, I guess. <laughs> um, but either way, I think I learned nonetheless. You know, I learn by getting things wrong a lot. That's how mm-hmm. I learn. <laughs> I've learned this about myself that I get things wrong many, many times over until I get it right. So. Don't mm-hmm. think I'm not learning, guys. <laughs> if if you watch I, watch the playback, yeah, I believe I believe you're learning, and I think something that makes this also a little bit easier and helps reinforce that learning is that many of the distortions that they give you are subtypes of your initial set, right? Right. And that, and often, when you call out a distortion later on in the game, Sam will make it clear. That it is in fact two distortions, right? Like, yeah. Uh, like, like you'll pick one, and then he'll say the other, like the super type of it, right? Or you'll say the super type, and then he'll call out the specific subtype. And I think that helps reinforce it, and also show it's like, okay, you know, like these things are all, well, maybe not all of them, all of them, but they're they're related, right? Like, there is overlap between them. Yes. And so it's not just like this one's always the one when this happens. This one's always one. It's like, well, right. I mean, it's, it's just plain it impossible to do that at, towards the end of the game where you have to choose which distortions are which. So I appreciate right. the, the bit of leeway there, but also like further narrowing down the concepts and stuff like that. Yeah. And it also makes sense from like, oh, well, granted, I, I say it makes sense. It makes sense to me, someone not educated in this field. Um, that's like really the end goal of them is to help the client by pointing out ways that their thinking is making them is harming themselves right with with like you know making their own mental state worse so like really the exact term doesn't always matter as long as you get the idea of why it's bad exactly right so so that's the main gameplay but we can't not talk about the mini game oh yes the fighting mini. next <laughs> I am still really, really uh, surprised that that was its own mini game, and I thought it was very funny watching you play it each time. Uh, uh, so we actually there are two mini games. One is um, the Biting Next, which is the one I think about, but also uh, Regulate Your Breathing, which oh. I did so poorly on the first time. <laughs> the first one, you did basically the opposite. Of what you're supposed to do, (laughs) both mechanically and in meditation. And at first I thought it was a bit, but it kept going. Well, it was a bit, but I couldn't stop it because I didn't know what to do. (laughs) I was lost in the bit. I honestly, I don't, I don't know which video it's in. Maybe I can think of it, uh, but we can add it to the description for this. Um, But if you're listening to this and haven't watched the playthrough, you really should find check check the description uh, and find the part where Nova tries meditation for the first time because it is <laughs> the antithesis of what I didn't meditation. understand the game mechanics and you know it probably was clearer than I don't know I just made it complicated I guess <laughs> but it was very funny is what I'm trying to say I'm not I saying that to because I did you, have saying. to I think I was pressing the button but I wasn't like hovering over the the words or maybe mm-hmm. it was the opposite either way i got it <laughs> i eventually got the achievement where it's like you had a great meditation session or whatever you did it perfectly yes. and i was like wow yeah, what a comeback you did get that just not the first time yeah actually i think you did it pretty perfectly all of the subsequent times i think it was only the first time that you had issues well like i said i learned by failing and um i failed quite terribly at that part <laughs> <laughs> um but back to the to the neck biting mm-hmm. i don't know i think it's just so funny that the little part is a mini game it's like it didn't have to be but like hey i guess it's immersive <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. but it was so it was actually kind of hard because a lot of these people i'm biting have collars on and i'm like right. okay apparently 
part of uh, when I did it a couple of times, I was doing it too high up, I suppose. And can we just imagine this in real life too, or like within the game, if it wasn't just like a vampire icon fang, you know, going up and down, it's Sam just going like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I should make a comic about that actually. Yeah, you, you, you should. That's a very funny thing to visualize. I'll put that on my list. Yeah, I completely understand why it is the way it is from a gameplay perspective. But like you said, it is very funny, very funny to picture it. Yeah, well, um, I think we're going to go back to or finish up with uh, final thoughts. Final, final thought. I mean, this is the final thoughts talk back. But did you feel like you learned anything? Are you excited for a potential vampire therapist part two? Is there any other comments you want to say about this game? Um, I think I did learn some stuff. Like I said, I'm relatively uneducated in this field. I think I've taken like one intro to psychology class, which is certainly, you know, more, it, it's not really therapy focused, right? Like that sort of deal. Um, so I had a fun time learning all of these distortions and then reading the Wikipedia pages on them to, um, you know, learn more about them. Uh, so that, that was very fun from an educational standpoint. I thought that like I said at the beginning, the way they take human problems and scale them up to supernatural scale is very well done. And yeah, I'm I'm interested in both uh, a sequel, or really, even if it's not a sequel, just like anything with a similar quality of writing and characters out of this team, right? Out of this developer, this writer um these voice actors like I, I imagine you know you'd switch out parts of the team i don't i don't know exactly who's a part of the developer group but like the quality of the writing i think is something that could carry through different genres um the writing and the characterizations and so i'd love to see it both in a sequel and if they have other ideas where the wherever those other ideas take them yes all i agree with all that i do want to mention the voice acting as well so good oh, yes. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, i mean mm -hmm. i don't i'm not very good at like remembering names for voice actors but i'm also like oh that sounds kind of familiar or like but besides the familiarity i think everybody killed it out there i thought everybody's tone and um there's just like little things like how they would um click their tongue or like something in their throat a little bit of a, a wobble here and there I think everybody was just so talented and I I just love a visual novel that has full full um voice acting it's so mm -hmm. it's so wonderful yeah I mean don't get me wrong like I don't think a visual novel needs it to be good but when you have high quality voice acting for the whole visual novel it makes it very easy to just not put it down you know yeah i mean um, can you uh just a brief aside for a different video game but disco elysium having it voice acted like completely i know it wasn't like that originally but mm -hmm. so it elevates it so much yeah that's another game where the voice actors really do a lot of uh a lot of work to make it such a smoother experience and i think that's I think that's true for most text games, right? And like, and the reason why I say I don't think you need it is because I know there's good, especially like if you go into older JRPGs, right? There was very little, if any, voice acting, and those were long, text-heavy games, and they they still right. managed to have good, yeah, engaging definitely, stories. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't. But a visual novel helps. doesn't need it, but when it's good, it's great. Right. When it's good, it's great, and that you're right to mention that. Like, a good voice actor really elevates good writing right yeah so well thank you so much for joining me to talk about the game i really liked this actually and if we have play any other short games maybe we can return and, and just debrief about it because i love hearing yeah. your thoughts yeah i like this idea of a debrief that you've had um i think it's a good thing and we should continue to do it when it makes sense you know amazing and oh my god, let's just vamp haha for like 10 ah. more seconds.
because then we'll be okay. exactly in an hour. All right. What do we say? We say uh, good evening and rest in peace. Bye-bye. Rest in peace.